Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Uh, today we got another gun gripe episode for you. Today we're going to be talking about every man or woman a rifleman. Okay, so the whole vein of today's gripe, you know, in recent events we've seen how beneficial it is to society for everybody to be armed and to be able to protect themselves, their communities. Uh, you know, we have experienced a recent tragedy but the tragedy what you know could have been a lot worse were it not for the quick and swift actions of a couple of uh, outstanding Americans which we'd like to definitely thank in this video and they are more or less the inspiration for today's video guys so what does it mean I mean everybody a rifleman well when you look at the military doctrine behind riflemen okay uh, let's just we'll use the army for example okay I mean there's various uh, branches of military service but in the army one of the things that's taught primarily, you know, you go through basic training and every single person, it doesn't matter if you're a cook, it doesn't matter if you're a medic, it doesn't matter if you're an infantryman, it doesn't matter if you're a ranger, whoever the heck you are, if you're wearing that uniform, you are a rifleman, first and foremost. You have the ability to pick up a weapon and defend all of those around you. Because guys, in the duress of warfare, or uh, in just in everyday life, I mean, look at things like Fort Hood, uh, look at situations where soldiers are just on post doing their thing and then something happens. You have to be ready at all times to protect those around you. And it doesn't matter what your job title is. The enemy does not care. All they see is that uniform and they want to destroy you. So you, every man is a rifleman. And that is a doctrine that is taught by, the military, by, by all the militaries. But my experience with Army, you know, that is a very big part of it. And that holds true in civilian life as well. Everyone is a rifleman. You have to be ready to protect yourself at any time and protect those around you. And I've said it once and I'll say it again, as, as Chad, I'm sure, will echo what I'm going to say, is um, we've said on numerous occasions that your average gun owner wants to protect everyone around them. Trust me. Trust me. Guys like Steven, who risked his life to protect those people, he had to make a decision. He had to make a split-second decision. He didn't know if help was on the way. He didn't know how many shooters there were. He didn't know if he was going to run out of ammo and then get shot himself. He didn't know, but he had a duty that he felt he owed to the people around him and that he wanted to do the right thing and protect those people. And that is the very nature of the Second Amendment. It's exactly what Stephen did that day. He, he lived exactly what the Second Amendment is intended for. Now, we can't forget Johnny. Okay, now, now we'll, I'll let Chad kind of, you know, mention, you know, Johnny's part in the whole thing. But basically, Johnny and Steven were both guys that just felt like they needed to do that thing at that time, and they were doing the right thing. Johnny did not know Steven from Adam. Okay, and, and, and you know, if you're in a situation when you're in your truck and you're just hanging out and some guy goes, hey, uh, some guy just did this, we have to go get him. And then his, his first response was, well, okay, let's go do it. So it. that is what it's about, guys. Assessing the situation and, and taking care of the threat. You know, it's just awesome. It, it's, it's bad and good at the same time because, I mean, obviously our hearts go out to people that are affected by tragedies and affected by evildoers in the world. And believe me, it sucks. It really does. And it's hard to make sense of it all. It really is. But at the end of the day, it is also a victory because it proves that an armed citizenry is the absolute best defense against anybody that would do evil against you. Yep. I mean, the, I think one of the big points of this gripe itself is that, you know, in this situation with Stephen Williford and Johnny Langendorf and their quick actions to thwart this threat, especially on Stephen's part, who walked out of his house barefoot loading a magazine for his AR as he walked out of the house to go less than a block away to the Baptist church and figure out what in the world was going on because he knew at that point it was gunshots. And there's a great interview with him over on the Stephen Crowder YouTube page. If you guys, you know, even if you don't like Stephen Crowder, it's irrelevant, okay? He's got a great exclusive interview with him and he really, you know, Stephen really puts you in his shoes okay or well like thereof just figuratively speaking um but it, it's it's a very incredible and humbling story and it's just pure courage and bravery because he had no idea what was going to happen if he was going to get shot get killed whatever he faced danger because he knew people needed help and uh the the media can't they can't ignore it this time 
you know, and that's my big gripe is the media ignores, you know, the lawful use of firearms for self-defense situations all across the country and they never report them. Absolutely. You know, that's my biggest gripe. These things happen on a daily basis. Yes. People protect themselves and others with firearms that are legally carried, legally owned, you know, in the home, in the workplace, wherever. And you never hear about it because the media is biased. And if you don't believe that, then you've been living under a freaking rock. Well, you know, not but, only is there this bias that's present, you even look at the fact that you look at all these reports and what do you see? Oh, well, some shooter, uh, you know, attacked a church with with an assault rifle and blah, blah, blah. And then, oh, it's just nonchalantly, oh, well, a guy with a rifle, <clears throat> so, you know, well, shot it. So it's, it, it was a guy with just simply a rifle. The first report, But yet the bad guy had an assault rifle. So come on. The that first, is so The first reports that came out, you know, they were very Joe Biden-esque, you know, in that, way. Well, there was a guy with a shotgun who was shooting this, this guy up who shot the church. And then, you know, the interviews start coming out. It's like, no, I had an AR-15. Oh, no. Oh, no. If I'm CNN or MSNBC, oh, he had oh, an, oh, gonna... an AR-15. Oh, my God. What are we going to do well, about this? Well, then what this? they did is, oh, when, when they found, found out that a good guy with an AR stopped a bad guy with an AR, oh, well, crap, that doesn't fit our narrative. So now what do we need to do? Oh, well, now let's focus on, oh, well, the fact that the Air Force dropped the ball on reporting this guy's, you know, mental health issues and, and the fact that he'd been dishonor dishonorably discharged. Now, look, guys, I understand, okay? I get it. I, I know that's a crappy thing, and the Air, Air Force is going to have to answer for that because when you're dishonorably discharged, especially when you're talking domestic violence or any type of violence towards a person, I mean, this guy was thrown in the brig for a year before he was dishonorably discharged. Guys, look, it is a very, very, and I will just say this, it is a very complicated issue when it comes to military service and when it comes to people uh, that have been in bad situations. Now, we don't know what the guy went through, and I'm going to assume he wasn't deployed. I don't know. I'm not going to make uh, judgments about things that I don't know about. But however, you know, I guarantee you what's going to happen out of this whole thing is a bunch of folks are going to be calling for stricter background checks. They're going to be calling for, oh, well, we want all our veterans to be thrown under a rock because, oh, well, they're all mentally messed up and they're all damaged goods and they shouldn't be able to own guns. And, and, and they're going to, they're going to you, you know, through a method of blanket coverage, they're just going to probably throw a lot of people under the bus uh, in terms of the gun rights that probably don't deserve to be, oh, well, definitely don't deserve to be thrown mm -hmm. under the bus. Now, well, Obama tried to do that with the Social Security thing. He did. You know? Now, one thing I want to mention about this, under current law, um, and, and we're getting off into kind of a little bit different tangent, but believe me, it, it does matter in this mm -hmm. video, and it's something I want to discuss, but under current law, the only way a veteran can have his gun rights taken away, if, unless he's dishonorably discharged, is if the a court manages him uh, incapable of managing his own... Basically, if they determine that you're incapable of managing your own affairs and you have to be assigned like a person to do that for you, mm -hmm. like let's say that you're so mentally messed up or you're so damaged that you can't even like tie your shoes, you can't write a check, you can't get in a car and go drive and get your groceries and they have to mm -hmm. assign somebody to do that, then they could then say, yeah, okay, th this guy can't own a gun or whatever. But... Now, if you're dishonorably discharged, yes, you, you, you lose your gun rights. I mean, that's why they ask you on a 4473, have you ever been dishonorably discharged from the military? Well, the guy knew he had been dishonorably discharged, but he chose to lie on the form. And due to a, a reporting error on the Air Force's part, not only between that, but also because of uh, the domestic abuse, I believe, is what I read about, and also mental Nick's health. Didn't catch it. Yeah, mental health issues and such. I mean, the guy broke out of a mental institution for the love of God. You know that he was in for what a year. You're you're gonna you know? be hearing a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline, guys, about mental health, and you're gonna be hearing a lot of stuff about service members and things that they've been exposed to and things that that are in their records. And I will just say this. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk about any specifics that have happened to me or things that I've done or things that I've seen because it doesn't matter. It's in the past. But one thing I will say is that some scars aren't physical. And guys, post-traumatic stress syndrome affects a lot of veterans. And it does not have to be combat related. You could be sitting right here stateside, minding your own business uh, in your cushy little office, 
doing whatever you do and look out the window and unfortunately some poor Joe got ran over by a tank or something. You witnessed that horrible act, that thing happening, that it was an accident. Someone just got hurt. Someone got killed and you, you're traumatized from it. Guys, post-traumatic stress, it comes in a lot of different forms and it doesn't just have to be combat related. Things happen. If you're, if you're a civilian and you're in the workforce just doing your thing, minding your own business, and you witness a horrific accident, and you witness one of your coworkers die, guess what? You could have an acute form of post-traumatic stress syndrome. It, just because somebody has PTSD doesn't mean they're whack jobs, doesn't mean they're crazy, doesn't mean they have, need to have all the gun rights taken away. It just means that they've seen a very bad thing, and sometimes it can... It can affect you a little bit. It can, it can, you know, have you at sorts at times. So I would just urge people to remember that before they start trying to throw all our service members under the bus as like, oh, well, all these military people are crazy when they come back from overseas. You know, try to put yourself in the situation to understand what you're asking these men and women to do for you. Before you decide to take their gun rights away, you might want to consider what they've done for you and to consider... But you make that bed, you're going to have to sleep in it. You're going to make a lot of people very angry if you try to do that. So I guess the vein of the gripe is, guys, the, you know, these, these dudes are heroes. They are. They certainly are. Johnny's a hero and Steven's a hero. And I'm, I'm going to tell right now, right here on the channel, I've been trying to get in touch with him. I, I sent Johnny a message on Facebook. I'm sure he's probably getting overwhelmed with uh, probably different people uh, sure. probably trying to contact him. But one thing I want to do, I would love to have Johnny and Steven come, up, come down to the farm, come shoot with us. We'd like to take them out and go shoot. And uh, maybe we can have a little interview and you can hear it from the horse's mouth yourself if you want. But if anything, I'd love to have them down uh, to come do some shooting with us. And, uh, you know, and I'd like to talk to them about uh, what, you know, what firearms they had on them, if they were confiscated or not, or taken for evidence. I know there's, you know, certain little things that kind of get thrown mm -hmm. in the mix there that you deal with uh, in, in a shooting like that. I'd be curious to know a little more and, uh, and see if there's a way that we can help them with that and, and everything like that. So if you know those guys, uh, tell them to respond to our messages. We'd love to have a chat with them. I know they're probably busy. But anyway, um, I didn't mean to get <laughs> off topic, guys. And remember, we're not media. So, no, I we're mean... Not. I know the media has been hounding these guys like crazy, you know, and Stephen was cooped up in his house for several days because he just couldn't leave because they were just dogging him and dogging him and dogging him. And right. the sheriff even, you know, ran these folks off for a while, but then they just came right back. I mean, they have no humanity nor respect whatsoever for anybody. I mean, it's all about it's the story ridiculous. and it's all about the money to them. That's all they ridiculous. care about. Well, look, the thing is, I didn't mean to get too far off topic but on, it, on talking it was, about it, but I feel like it was pertinent to this video because we are discussing the events in Texas. <clears throat> and, uh, and guys, heroes are everywhere. Yep. You know, and I tell you, when, when I read about what happened and, and when, I figured, when I found out that it was a citizen, that it was just doing what they felt was the right thing to do, I was very humbled by that, but also a little bit jealous because... Trust me, a lot of us, we, we have this mentality of being prepared, of being that sheepdog, that the kind of sheepdog mentality that follows a lot of us around. And look, it's not a macho thing. Uh, we're not trying to you know beat our chest and be macho about it. We're not trying to make a big deal about it. But the bottom line is, if you take a firearm and you strap it on your hip and you walk into town, guess what? You, you, are, you are just as important to the citizenry around you as the police are. The police may not know it. The citizens may not know it. You may not even know it. But if something bad happens and you exercise good judgment and caution and you do the right thing and you have trained yourself on your firearm to the, to the level where you can pull it out and use it exactly as, as you need to use it, then guess what? You are what is called a force multiplier. Mm -hmm. And the police, trust me, they need people like you. You know, how many of you, and, and this is just, we're getting off on a slightly different tangent, but I want to talk about it. How many of you have your sheriff's number programmed in your phone? The sheriff of the county you live in. How about, how about the top five deputies? How, how many of you have five other sheriff's deputies other than the sheriff programmed in your phone that you can call right now? How many of you have that? How many of you know your representative's phone numbers right on your phone where you can call them right now and discuss an issue? Guys, being a part of your community is more than just strapping on a gun and going to town and going, all right, well, I'm in my own little cocoon and I'm going to protect myself. Now, mm. now, granted, that's your right. 
You want to protect yourself? Do it. Please. Please protect yourself. But at the end of the day, engaging and being a part of a community is knowing your community. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Johnny and Stephen did that day. They knew their community was in danger. They were engaged in their community and knew that they were needed and they did the right thing because it was the right thing to do. Not because the sheriff told them to, not because the cops were looking, not because they thought, oh, well, the cops might be on the way, they might not be on the way. Guess what? It was the right thing to do at that time, and they knew they needed to do it, and they did it. And that is the definition of every man being a rifleman or woman, mm -hmm. being a rifleman. The, the, the scary part to me about rifle this... rifle woman. <laughs> rifle woman. The scary part to me about this whole situation is if we did not have the gun rights that we do in this country, if we did not have the Second Amendment, you know, and... And, and have legal gun ownership and the ability to defend oneself, one's community, one's country from just a Joe Blow standpoint, okay? How many more people may have died at the hands of this madman? How many? I mean, nobody knows. Nobody knows if he was just done and Stephen and, and Johnny just, you know, they, they, and he was at the end of his, you know, his, his thing that he was wanting to do and that was it. He was just going to go home and... Go and do whatever, it. you know. He was probably going to go somewhere else and just start up the same crap again. So if it was not for legal gun ownership and people exercising their rights, what more would have happened? It's just, it's, this is what the, like happens in European countries and stuff with stricter gun control and where, you know, a gun in the house is not even heard of in some of these countries. And something's going down like that, everybody locks their doors and they hide and they wait for the authorities and, you know, the police and everybody to show up and stop it. But... Uh, I mean, how much has to happen? You know, there, there's very much a difference of opinion on uh, this type of issue. I know a lot of <clears> folks <throat> have some varying opinions about it, and uh, some of them uh, very horrible opinions in terms of what they think about gun owners. You know, there, there's people out there that 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 range from the level of we think everybody needs to throw them in a freaking wood chipper and nobody needs to own a gun at all, all the way to people on the very very other extreme side of the fence that might have e even crazier views. Uh, then, well, I mean, it, it takes all types, guys, I guess is the point I'm making. And the point I want to drive home, I guess, in that statement is that mm. we all have varying opinions. We all think different things. We all have different motivations in life, things that we do, people we love, uh, religions that we adhere to or don't, okay? And guys, we are a very varied mixing pot of people in this country with vi different opinions, different lives, different motivations. And it's but, okay to not think like everybody else around you. At the end of the day, though, we are all Americans. That's right. Remember that. We yeah. are all Americans, and we all ultimately just want to help and protect everybody else around us. The average gun owner, I mean, do you think for one second, do you think for one second that the average gun owner, if you were in danger, no matter who you are, they would not help you? I think, and I've said it, I've said it mm -hmm. time and time and again, and yep. situations like this just prove that I'm right, and I was right all along, that the average gun owner would be willing to give his life to help anybody around him. It's just the way we're wired. You know, people like the shooter in Texas, the bad guy, do not represent us. Not even a portion, not even an iota of a portion of us. But people like Johnny and people like Steven, those men represent who we are and what we're about. They represent the side of the Second Amendment that I think we all love and cherish. And they literally got to cash the ultimate check that day. In fact, they offered a blank check that day, leading up to potentially their lives. They, they offered a blank check to their fellow man that day that, that had no limit. That, that check could have been cashed and that could have been their last day on earth that day. They didn't know. They didn't know. How, how, did, how did Johnny not know by following the guy that he was going down the road to a, a, a compound full mm -hmm. of crazies that were all getting ready to go do the same thing? How, how did he not know that they were going to roll into a, a, a group of thugs? They, they didn't know. They did what they needed to do. And that is the sheepdog mentality and that is the every man a rifleman mentality. I know we preach it a lot, guys, but we have to. I feel mm -hmm. it's important to reiterate the positives that happen in life and, and how they outweigh the negatives mm -hmm. that we see. Well, speaking of some negatives of the whole situation, you know, even irregardless of, you know, an armed citizen using a firearm, which the left wants to ban all the time, all these anti-gunners want to ban, 
You know, they still are preaching assault weapons bans, you know, bump fire stock bans, yep. all this crap. They want to take these weapons out of the hands of the common man. These I hate tools, to call them weapons. These tools. They're tools. You know, the firearms, whatever, that they always want to ban, semi-autos and everything else. They want to take these tools away from us when this proves what they can be used for and what their intended purpose is. Guys, That's right, what kills right now, Feinstein and all of her uh, cronies oh, are yeah. just dreaming up ways to take your guns away. And, and look, here's the last thing that we would ever want to do. We do not want to cry chicken little. We do not want to make this a bigger deal than it is. Guys, it's not even made it to committee yet. It won't even, it probably won't even be heard by committee, Likely much less not. even get out of committee. But the thing is, do not treat it like it's just, oh, well, it'll never happen. Keep your ears to the ground. Keep your, yeah. your, your eyes open <clears throat> for any news coming from the GOA or NRA and everything like that. I mean, just, <clears throat> you want to talk about that? Uh, well, just, just real quick, I mean, okay, so you got the assault, you know, the new fine science assault weapons ban. I'll put some links in the description box below and everything. Follow um, it, guys. So you've, you've got that. I mean, you still got bump fire bans and crap like that. There's some other stuff going on across the country in other states that we're going to talk about in another gripe. Yes. But the biggest thing is not only to contact your reps to oppose these bills that haven't even made it into committee yet to be voted on that have just been introduced, but also to make sure that Paul Ryan... And these other Republicans, or so-called Republicans, more like rhinos, pull the SHARE Act, HPA, National Reciprocity, all back, you know, off of hold, and get those to the floor for a vote, and do what you damn well promised. Right. This is what we need to do. Not just, oh, well, yeah, oppose this, but you need to bring back the bills that we want as Americans, as gun owners. We are on the offensive here, and by God... I mean, we need to use it and not be complacent in this crap. It's ridiculous that they put these on hold because of stupid mess that's going on. They need to come back and they need to man up and they need to put these on the House and the Senate floors for votes. I agree. So you need to call, contact Paul Ryan especially, tell him to quit being such a pansy and put this stuff back out there and be a man about it. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I mean, <laughs> no, Chad's absolutely <laughs> right. You know, so, Irritated. So, I mean, so I, I tend to... I tend to let cooler heads prevail a little bit more. Sorry. But believe no, no, trust me though. It is bogus. God. We man. do need to get some of these programs. I mean, we have worked very, very hard. And I say we, I'm talking about you guys. <clears throat> we collectively, all of us, you watching and us, I we worked very hard to, to spread the word about these these positive bills and get these things uh, to the point where I mean they made it out of committee and, and they're they're getting moved up the the political process. But to find it being just, uh, you know, <laughs> stopped by a guy who's just basically not holding up to the ideals of his party. Well, not only that, a lot of people think that, oh, all you guys care about is guns. No, I care about health care reform, too. I care about tax reform. These are things that I'd like to see done as well. But they're not doing their job. They are not keeping the promises that they were voted in for. Oh, if you vote us in, we'll do this. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> we haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Where yet? You got to stay on these people and hound them right and left every day until they get sick of it. That's right. And they do something about it. Well, um, speaking about doing something about it, uh, I do <laughs> want to just quickly mention, I guess this gun gripe, you know, it, <clears throat> we, we've gone in a lot of different directions in this gripe. and I We hope always do. I hope you'll forgive us oh, for, for jumping around a little bit with <sighs> this one. But there's just a lot going on, a lot of things to talk about. And uh, believe me, the, the core of the gripe is still there. But I do want to quickly mention in this video the fact that, you know, we have had meaningful conversations with gun owners of America. Mm -hmm. uh, we were on a recent phone call with uh, them as well as, you know, we were on, the, on a chat with uh, Tim over at Military Arms Channel and just hashing some things out and just seeing kind of where they stand. Uh, I did become a member of, of Gun Owners uh, of America. And, you know, I, I'm a member of their organization now, and I also uh, give them a monetary donation each month. I'm not suggesting you do it. All I'm saying is I, I feel like they had some really good things to say, and uh, they definitely had some really good ideas, mm -hmm. and they are really doing some awesome things to help out in the 2A community. Uh, I'm not going to say the NRA isn't. However, the NRA has some Explaining to do, Lucy. <laughs> Lucy, oh, <laughs> Lucy, I'm home. Oh, oh. 
Anyway, but, but you know, they got some exp- some explaining to do, like Ricky would say. <laughs> Ricky! Uh, that that's went way too far, but but you guys, in, in, yeah, if you guys anyway, don't get it, they yeah. got some they got some explaining to do. Okay, and the thing is, it's, it's there's some definite issues with leadership at the NRA, and they know it. And there's some things they need to do, and I can't necessarily say that I am fond of supporting the NRA until they fix their leadership issues and they actually quit playing games with our rights and they quit playing, uh, you know, treating our gun rights like volleyball. They can just throw back and forth across the net at different politicians to try to get uh, lobbying money. Uh, that's not the right reason, okay? <clears throat> they need to spend the, the money that they get from, their, uh, from all of their members to actually get things done. And I just feel like they're, they're really losing touch mm-hmm. with their base. And uh, I, I feel like GOA is definitely a good group of people. Uh, I, I'm not... I'm not saying I endorse them. I'm not. I don't endorse the NRA. Never have endorsed the NRA. All I'm saying is, guys, division within this whole situation is what we have to avoid. Mm-hmm. Whether or not you support the uh, GOA, whether or not you support the NRA, I'm or still both. I'm still an NRA life member. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give up my NRA li- life membership. However, you know they have some explaining to do. They have they need to right some wrongs, and I'm gonna hold their feet to the fire and. I'm going to continue to be outspoken about their actions until <clears throat> they reverse and do the right thing. Yeah. Uh, GOA, I'd like to think that they have uh, the right kind of ideas. But guys, it's that grassroots level stuff that is going to get things done on Capitol Hill. Okay, It's people like us getting together and sharing ideas, using this platform and this medium, sharing our ideas, getting people involved, calls to action. These are all things that we're always going to put out on this channel to keep you guys informed. Like we always want to ring that bell, that Liberty Bell, loud so that people know what's going on. And I guess that does sort of encompass the overall scheme of this gripe wholly, I believe, because, you know, I I don't know what Johnny and Steven's affiliations were with any sort of uh, group, so to speak, in terms of, let's just say, NRA or GOA or Second Amendment Foundation or any of those. But they lived the words of the Second Amendment by their actions, and that is more important than any group could ever hope to do for you. Living, the, living those values every single day does way more for the Second Amendment than any kind of you know, other random group that you just stick a sticker on your car and, all right, I'm good. Yeah. No, you got to be like Johnny and Steven. You put a sticker on your car and you're like, all right, I'm good, and then it stays there even after you're not a member anymore. But I still, I still am of the opinion, talking about the NRA real quick, is that you know, the organization is big. It can't be changed overnight. It has to be changed from within. And all these folks that just say, screw the NRA and jump ship and everything like that, and they go and join Gun Owners of America or they join, join another organization and they, they you know, redact their membership and all this, it's not the right answer. Changing it from within, starting with the board, is the way to do it. And the only way to do that is to be a voting member. And I will still remain a voting member of the NRA in order to try to change the organization and we'll continue to call them out on their bull crap and we'll continue to have our opinions as we see fit about what they have going on and what they're doing. But, you know, we'll still work with them and stuff like that as far as, you know, getting information out there to you guys. I mean, whatever conduit we use to get information out irrelevant. is irrelevant. It's just the, the fact of the matter is the, the anti-gun... Uh, rhetoric that's out there a lot of times when we first hear about it is from one of these organizations and we can spread the word to you guys what you do with it is you know whatever I mean you can you can be a part of an organization if you want to or you can just pick up the phone and just be like hey I'm just a concerned citizen I'm a gun owner correct and uh, this is how I feel about this and I'm a constituent of yours it doesn't matter the fact is like Eric said it's a grassroots level thing and that's the way it has always been, and that's the way it will always be, no matter what banner you use. I know so. this has been a long video, guys, and I appreciate you sticking yep. around for this. I mean, I, I know we kind of jumped off on a bunch of different subjects, but I feel <clears throat> it was stuff that was really important to talk about. And I know a lot of folks kind of treat this video as sort of like a podcast, well, like or they'll play it over the radio on their way to work. I mean, like literally, I was sitting in traffic the other day going north uh, to go run an errand, and this guy pulled up in a semi truck. He was like. <laughs> Eric, like I had my window rolled down, and he had his phone out. Okay, watching gun gripes. It was us standing in front of uh, the Alamo. He was watching gun gripes, and he was on the road doing his thing. He's like, yep. "Man, I love the videos, man. When I'm on the road, so see, you know that is cool. You know, I really appreciate that and all. I will mirror what Chad said. I'm not going to throw away my NRA membership just yet. 
I, I do believe in trying to change the organization from within. I'm going to do the best I can. I am a card toting member of GOA now, and I will continue to support GOA. And uh, guys, bottom line, and I'm also going to continue to support men like Johnny and Steven. I mean, those guys risk their lives to help their citizens, and they embody the spirit of the sheepdog and the spirit of the every man a rifleman or riflewoman. That that Can't mentality be that, now. that that is definitely what this entire gripe is about, mm-hmm. and they really, in my opinion, embodied. Mm-hmm that idea and we just wanted to, to say thanks to those guys very and much big thank wonderful you. dudes and uh you know and that's <clears> the thing i don't have to know them personally to know they're good people because of what they i guarantee you that i could i could go hang out with a guy like johnny or steven we probably have a lot to talk about we probably drink some beers smoke some cigars hang out go shoot some coyotes i have no doubt in my mind that those dudes are stand-up guys because you have to be a stand-up guy to put yourself uh, before or put yourself in front of danger when it comes to uh, people trying to hurt your herd, and that mm-hmm. you know that's what they did. They were sheepdogs that day. So, I guess we'll just leave you with that. And uh, I mean, yeah, I know the scribe kind of went a lot of different directions, but I know there was a lot well, of things to talk about. Our teleprompter broke, so you know how that worked. Yeah, we don't have a teleprompter back there telling us what to say. <laughs> we, you, you can tell we just kind of just go off the seat of our pants here. But um, always, we definitely want to thank everybody for the support. You guys are wonderful. We appreciate the support on Gun Gripes. Uh, if there's ever a Gun Gripe uh, episode idea you have, uh, feel free to email it to us. We'll try to accommodate it. Guys, we get a lot of emails. Mm-hmm. Please bear with us. Uh, Brandy's just one woman. She can only go through them so quick. I mean, my wife monitors all the emails, so um, it's, it can be tough sometimes. But guys, nonetheless, we appreciate all the support. We have many more videos on the way, more Gun Gripes, Firearms Facts, more Five Guns. I know mm-hmm. we haven't cut many Five Guns videos. We got more of those on the way. We got more meltdowns. Guys, we do gunsmithing videos. We do uh, reloading videos from time to time. Uh, I haven't really been able to put put out quite as many uh, gunsmithing and reloading videos as I'd like. But guys, we are a multifaceted channel. We do all kind of stuff. Thank you so much for the support. We hope you consider subscribing if you're not subscribed already. And we'll see you next time. See you guys.